Hello beautiful, welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts and feelings on Fuzz by Mary Roach, When Nature Breaks the Law. And this is our book club book for April and the Girls Night Out book club. There's information below about that. There's information uh, or a video about um, the books we'll be reading this year and also um, a list of book chats where we have discussed those books together. Okay, if you're new to this channel, hello, my name is Natasha. I do videos on books bullet journaling, um, art journaling, media, basically anything I want to do a video about because hey, why not? And I would love if you would click the like button if you like this book, you know, this book, this video. If you like me and you want to see more, I'd love to have you. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the little no notification bell. I do my best to post every Friday and then sometimes there are little videos throughout the week that pop up so that no little notification bell will help you know about those. All right, so let's just get into the book. And this is a bright, sunny, happy day. Look at this lighting. It's just amazing. <laughs> I, I'm just like living the life with the sunshine and the warmth lately. It's, it's just good. I just hope it stays because I like to have plants and flowers and stuff outside. So I'm waiting for that last little freeze because you know it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. It's North Carolina. You don't like the weather. You wait five minutes. That's just how it is. All right. Let's talk about the book. So a couple of things about this book. And I normally do like a part where... We talk about the book non-spoilery and then I give you a warning and let you know, you know, click out or come back later once you've read it. Um, I'm not going to do that this time because there's no way I could spoil all the information in this book. But I am going to talk about some of my um, favorite things, some highlights. But first, let's talk about the book and the writing and all of that. Um, Mary Roach has written a lot of books. Um, it, in the front of the book, um, it has all the books that she has done and I did not realize I didn't put two and two together where is this list whatever it's in here um she wrote stiff which was a really big book either last year or the year before everybody was just like talking about it um so I didn't realize she had written that until I saw this so um she's been well known for the book she's written and all of her books are named like this one like fuzz when nature breaks the law and then like stiff and then there's a little tagline to that which I didn't see in the book so whatever. Um, <laughs> this is um, dry writing at its best. It is dry as a cracker um, as far as like if you've read Michael Crichton um, he writes good books but his writing is very dry. There's no flowers involved um, and you're gonna get the same thing with this. I describe this as um, imagine reading a textbook that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is, um, you know, there's flavor in it, but I think our writer is, and she knows this because of what she says in the book. I picture her has a really like dry sense of humor, kind of nerdy quip kind of gal because she has these little jokes. And when I say jokes, I mean like one liners, quips about what other people say, um, like they'll say something or they'll mention something and she'll kind of come in with a one-liner there and they're corny and they're bad and she knows it because she also puts the response like the reaction of the person she has said this to like if they're just standing there like blinking at her she'll put that in the book she puts the reaction to her her jest in the book so she knows she's this way um, but the links that she goes to to get her information is phenomenal. Um, she flew and, and went all over the world and um, really, I would say investigative journalism type things to get information. Um, and she wouldn't take no for an answer until it was just like, you know, the police are coming out <laughs> to make you go away. So I, I, um, I really enjoyed the aspect that she would go through some difficult things and some some scary things to get the information that she wanted to really present this book the way that she felt it needed to be done. Um, I thought that when I got this book, especially because it has like the National Park kind of sticker or patch on the front, I thought we were going to get more like funny type of 
things that animals in like national parks or you know whatever do and uh, talk about those but it was actually way more in depth than that um, again she traveled to India she traveled to New Zealand she traveled to um, well Canada obviously um, and then all over North America I feel like there are other places she went that I'm not thinking of but there's lots of different animals mentioned and some of them why they're endangered and some um, you know why people die from them and things like that so um, she didn't just focus on people dying from animals she also focused on the impact on crops and things like that and how um, typically sometimes it balances out and she even talks to some farmers um, about that so there's the the gist of what you're gonna get from this book again the writing is dry <laughs> um, but the information is good and some of the things that happen are funny in themselves and that's more towards the end of the book which is good because she's getting into more of the boring animals I'd say um, like some of the birds and things that we don't really think of or even deer which are we have them everywhere in the US they're everywhere um, and I live in the southern US um, so they're walking down my sidewalks I mean it's funny my um, you know growing up I grew up in like a, an open kind of area like we had a, a barn and horses and stuff we didn't see a lot of deer in our area because there were so many other things but people hunted them um, and so deer kind of kept to the woods and things like that here is um, we're in a more like urban environment and so deer are not hunted right here within like acres and so we also have reservoirs I live very close to a reservoir um, and there um, this is we live in Wake Forest which is um, across the street here in Raleigh and um, it is a tree sanctuary so you have to get permission from the county or the city excuse me the city to do anything to a tree even if it's on your property all of that is a tree sanctuary um, so because of that deer are more plentiful in the housed areas than they are where I'm from um, so literally there they were walking down the street one day my dad was visiting and he was like is that dog that dog is that deer walking down the sidewalk I'm like yes it is that is a city deer <laughs> and it knows where to walk to not get hit by a car so um, yeah, we have them everywhere. See, where I'm from, we actually have a lot of alligators. It's not Florida, it's North Carolina, um, but we have quite a few alligators because it's um, a beachy area, but it's also a swampy area. So you know to stop and let the thing cross the street or whatever. Um, if they do get more, they, we just kind of let them live, let them do their thing. If they start to get um, aggressive and go after like they don't typically go after humans unless you're in the water but they will go after small animals like dogs and things like that so when that starts to happen then to keep them from progressing up they will actually um, either euthanize the animal or they'll try to relocate it to something but um, a lot of times it's already killed something or some things and so they'll they'll euthanize it so um, there's definitely you know, like even in my area nuisance animals the biggest nuisance animal we have in our area which is hilarious is Canadian geese we are overrun with them and we have a problem with them thankfully living in Wake Forest not as bad as in actual Raleigh um, when you get to certain parts of like the Crabtree area of Raleigh um, it's they're they're you can tell when someone's lost it because they'll just try to run them over with their car which is a horrible idea because it's a huge bird and it will destroy your car but um, when I lived in Raleigh like on the one of the lakes and stuff like that it, you literally would have trouble getting to work in the morning because they would n not get out of the way there were huge packs of them and we were just overrun with them and it was just the the their feces in the water and things like that we have a real problem so there are nuisance animals that aren't necessarily predator animals and so towards the end of the book we get into that all right so let's actually talk about the book I'm done talking about this so 
Um, she starts out in India and talking about um, different types of monkeys and um, also elephants. And I found some interesting tidbits in this book. And I'm just going to pick out the interesting tidbits of the book because um, a lot of the information, the scientific information, the science behind it, the doctor she's speaking to, the government agent she's, she's speaking to, you really need to get in the book to really understand and get in that. And she has very good questions for them. Um, she knows the questions to ask. And then also, um, you know, the antidote. She's talked to enough people to be like, well, what about this? And um, very, very cool. So I'm going to just tempt you a little bit if you haven't read this book already on some of the things that you'll find in here. Um, in India, almost 500 people a year die from elephants, but it is mostly accidents. Um, elephants are not typically going to attack a human, um, but um, if a male animal is in, he has a hormonal type of thing called must, I think, that happens ever so often where his testosterone is, is really high, it's like the mating season, then he will possibly attack, but it's very rare that that is the, the cause. Um, it does happen, but most of the time it's an accident because um, elephants are just big. <laughs> if you get stepped on by a 6,000 pound elephant, you are going to be very hurt or dead. And so a lot of that happens when people, um, when like the herds kind of go through farmers areas and um, the farmers are like, you know, get out and then they stampede and one, you know, it's like, what do I do? And then runs off and runs over the farmer. You know, it wasn't intentional. It was just, you know, oops. And it's horrible, um, but that's what happens. Um, there was one that was, an, you know, especially interesting to me. Well, I mean, it's sad. It's it, They're all sad. These are real instances and, and so they're sad. But um, there was a, a man walking around a riverbank in India and it was really slippery so he started sliding down the slope. Well, the same thing had happened to an elephant that he didn't know was there and was sliding on the slope as well and rolled over him as they were both sliding and of course it killed him because elephants are big. So things like that, um, it's just learning how, just knowing that you live with nature and it's huge but sometimes they don't know the elephants are there because the elephants are moving, they're quiet, you turn a corner in a forest, you don't know they're there, then something can happen. You know, elephant can startle, you can startle, all of these things. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and they also talked about how in India, most people who are killed by animals, it's a snake, because they have very venomous snakes there. But that is not newsworthy. So they talk about <laughs> the sensationalism in their, their headlines is crazy because there'll be like herds of elephants have killed, you know, and it, it's like, it'd be like it was three elephants, like buying their business kind of a thing. So anything they can sensationalize. Not only that, but monkeys. They have a big problem with monkeys and there's a type of monkey that the main monkey that is a problem is scared of. So some people, it's illegal to do this, but some people will train those monkeys and will have them like on leashes and walk them like with security guards to keep the nuisance monkeys away. And those nuisance monkeys seem to not only like to go in and steal food and things like that, but they also like to just cause mayhem. <laughs> um, and they think it's funny. So that type of thing that people are living with on a daily basis. Um, also uh, leopards. And it was very interesting that, you know, most leopards in the world, humans are not necessarily on the menu. They don't look for humans. They're searching for something else. And, you know, a human comes along or there's a already a dead human there or something they'll eat because it's a it's an easy meal but there's this one uh, village in India and it seems and it talks about how it happened um, and through the bloodline and through the the mothers teaching the children and also they actually have developed a like a taste for humans and they actually prey and hunt humans there and so she goes there and um, they discuss this so um, very, very, very interesting. Um, then we go into like bears um, and they talk about how important it is to have um, like forensic people who investigate crimes in um, the forests and stuff and in national parks because many times the bear gets accused of killing someone 
when actually it was a person who killed a person, left it there, and then the bear took a free meal kind of thing. So um, they talk about the importance of that and also how they find these different things out and how they train for it. It's pretty interesting to me. Like I said, very dry writing. So if you're looking for a fictional book or a good time like that, you're not going to get that. This is, like I said, this is informational and I, I, I did enjoy the book. Um, but um, you also go into like the problems with deer and how, you know, the reason why they deer in the headlights kind of thing is because they don't see a car. They just see two orbs of light coming at them. And then they talk about ways that they're trying to um, fix that, kind of, you know, improve that, keep that going, and why that happens and um, why a lot of animals don't move out of the way of moving vehicles. And it's just incredibly interesting. Um, I love the part about the goals and, um, like, seagulls, but, like, goals, how they become a problem and a nuisance with um, not only airplanes and things like that, but also they caused a big havoc at the Vatican one Easter and the ways they have um, put in to kind of stop that from happening in the future um, and all kinds of things. So there's a lot of information in this book, um, but I found it entertaining because again, you are along the ride with this very corny, just dry humored author who picks up on, you know, the funny words and the funny things and why would they name it this kind of stuff. Um, and she holds that up too. So um, there's lots of footnotes in here and some of the footnotes are actual like important information. Some of them are just funny. They're just a joke she threw in there. Um, so I really enjoyed it. So I gave this book four stars, I think. Maybe three or four stars. I think I gave it four. I don't know. Um, all I know is that I didn't, I did enjoy this. Um, I learned some things and um, I, I'm glad I read this book. Um, it was on my like to do, to read list anyway, even before it made the, the book club list. But um, I, I recommend this, but again, only if you're okay with some dry writing. It's not flowery. There is a lot of information. It, there's a lot of science in there, but it is, I think, accessible to the masses. Um, some science books are just too much and your eyes start to glaze over like you're in class. I didn't feel that way with this one, but um, in our book club discussion that was live, that was not across the board, um, but I know that those ladies aren't really as interested in those type of things as I am, so that's probably why. You know what I mean? So if that type of thing interests you, I think you will really enjoy this book. If you're not into it and you don't care, <laughs> then it won't be. That's all I have to say about that. Um, uh, again, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great book. I got lots of good information. I think she was thorough in her um, trying to get all the information she could. She got involved. She was writing along with a lot of people and things like that. So I think the um, information, the investigation that she did to get this information was, was really good. So that's all. Um, have you read this book? Are you planning on reading this book? Put it down in the comments below what you thought and what your favorite kind of story was, what your favorite um, like animal situation they were talking about. Oh yeah. Because my least favorite, because it just, <sighs> the, in New Zealand, what they did in New Zealand, Europeans in the 1800s went over to New Zealand and they missed hunting some of the things that they hunted. So they brought some things over. People, when you have a natural habitat and an ecosystem and it is working fine, you leave it alone. You do not bring something from another ecosystem over because it's going to totally wreck it. So because of that and because of what they also brought over to try to remedy that, which didn't, um, a lot of their natural species, especially like their you know, hot weather penguins and things like that, are going extinct. They're endangered because of these animals and even trees that they brought over that don't belong there. So there's a big lesson. Leave it alone, folks. Leave it alone. Um, all right. That's it.
hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, again, let me know if you plan on reading this, if you have read it, what your favorite um, animal story, all of that was. Um, also, let me know what you've been reading in April. I'd love to know. And I'll see you guys very soon with another video. And pretty soon we're going to have our April wrap up. So, all right, that's it. Have a great day, gorgeous.